Thank you. And also, we will be recording the meeting. We're recording it um, just so if students do want to reference back to the information that we did provide, um, we're able to do that for them. So today's workshop is going to be about resume and CVs. We're going to go over like the differences between um, a resume and a CV. And towards the end, we're going to focus on the different components of a CV. Um, um, feel free to like put questions in the chat, the, the, but um, Ezra will go over those at the end of the presentation. Yeah, so feel free to write down questions and I'll be answering them towards the end or at the end. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> um, so we can start. So what's the difference between a resume and a CV? Um, so a resume, it's a brief summary of your skills, experience, and education. Usually it is shorter. Um, it's one to two pages. Um, a CV, which is Curriculum Viate, that's what it stands for. Um, it's a very detailed documentation of your educational, academic background, research experience, publications, presentations, honors, awards. Um, there are also additional sections that you can include in a CV, such as teaching grants. Usually um, a CV is longer. It's about three pages or more, depending on your experience and how much schooling you've been through. So when do you use um, your CV versus your resume? Um, for resume, generally you use it when you're applying to a wide variety of positions, for example, in like businesses, certain industries, governments, or nonprofits. When you use your CV, it's primarily when you're applying for an academic or research position. Um, these are also asked for when you're applying for certain academic awards, such as like a fellowship or a grant. Um, they're used for promotions, tenures for professors, and grants. Um, what's the main focus of a resume versus a CV? So a resume usually highlights all job-related experiences, including any volunteer extracurricular activities and skills that you've developed. A CV just demonstrates your academic achievements or your scholarly potential for the certain position that you're applying for. So key components of the resume include a name slash contact information, education, work experience, skills developed, awards and activities, things to include in your CV or your name and contact information, education, such as like degrees that you've earned, honors or awards, research, um, publications, scholarly or professional memberships, um, grants or teaching experiences, um, organizing your resume, um, it can be ordered chronologically or functionally, so you can ca categorize um, like things by like your skills or like key experiences that relate to the job that you're applying for. When organizing your CV, it does have to have a clear order and it is chron in chronological order by each of the categories. So now I'm just going to be going over the general like components of the CV and like where to start when you are planning to write the CV. So the purpose of the CV is to introduce any prospective employer, graduate program, undergraduate research program, or funding funding agencies to all of your qualifications. It communicates all of your related educational professional experiences. Um, it's usually organized, it's clear, it has to be readable and consistent. Um, usually the CV is designed to support any other application materials and um, it is in significant to um, get like any interviews or to move on like in the next steps of the application process. So when to use your CV, usually academic and research positions do ask you um, for a CV, grants, fellowships, and certain award programs ask you for your CV. Some graduate school programs ask you for your CV and they will um, let you know in the requirements section. Any overseas employment or international organizations, they do ask for a CV. Um, however, different countries do have different formats, so it's important to do your research. So how to start writing your CV? So to begin, it's important to create a master document. And this document would um, primarily focus on the content 
rather than the style so when you are writing you're like I guess it can be like a draft of your all of your experiences and um, from that master document you're able to copy paste it um, onto a certain or on the document that your CV is going to be on it's good to explore like different formats and styles depending on how you like to organize um, the information each page number or after the first page you include the page number and your last name and um, it is recommended to not use a template again just because I know a lot of people like to use different like formats and styles and usually templates don't like offer a, a clear or like well organized um, like template so um, in the CV, there are multiple different sections, and these sections include identifying slash contact information, your education, your experience, if it's relevant to the position you're applying for, any publications, any presentations, professional memberships, and any honors and awards. There are also other sections that you can include in the CV. Usually these sections are optional and they can be tailored to um, the specific um, internship or like research, um, research position that you're applying for. So for example, like if one of your research positions asks for like skills in multiple languages, you can include like a language section that includes like the languages that you're either fluent in or other things. Um, but yeah, these are just lists of other sections that you're able to include. Um, so when writing your identifying and contact information, things you should include are your name, your address, your phone number, and your email. Um, so moving on to the education section. So when writing your education, you include like your degree. So it can be like your Bachelor of Arts, your Bachelor of Science, um, the educational institution that you got your degree from, any major or minors that you had, your expected date of graduation, your cumulative GPA or your major GPA, which is optional. And you can include relevant coursework, which is also optional. So this is an example of how you're able to format the education section on your CV. So they started with the institution, the degree, uh, major, expected graduation date, and their GPA. So this is just one example if you're wondering like how to structure or format the CV. Here's another example. Um, sometimes using bold lettering can also like draw the attention of like the reader the reader to like certain aspects or like certain things that are important so like you know bolding the bachelor of science if like you're applying to a research program that like requires that certain experience that cannot like highlight um the significant experience that you've had um now moving on to experience so when you are listing relevant experience on your CV, it's important to use action verbs to describe your efforts and outcomes. Um, and like by doing this, you kind of signify like where this, like this information like is important and relevant to the job. It's important to ask yourself, how did you develop that experience? Because it's important to analyze your experience and give yourself credit, not just listing you know the tasks you did but also um highlighting like important skills that you learned or like what you got from that certain experience sometimes people do include subheadings such as like undergraduate research experience the certain academic year or summer that they had that experience any research or laboratory experiences or like community health experiences so this is just an example of how you're able to format it. Some people do like using bullet points when explaining um, what they did. So this is like an example of how to use bullet points. However, other people do like writing um, paragraph formats um, when explaining what they did in like the certain lab. Um, however, if you are looking into writing it, 
or like using like a paragraph style it's important to kind of keep it very concise and also um format it so that the person who's reading it knows like which paragraph applies to like which experience and then here's a third example of how you're able to um, use bullet points again this is more this is like less detailed about like showing what they did during like LSS. Um, publications, this is another section of the CV. When you do include publications, you can just list any publications that you've contributed to. These publications um, can be like published already or if you have a publication that's going to be published, you can also include that. So here's some examples. Um, usually when you are gonna cite uh, publications important to include like the authors, the title, the page numbers. And then if it is going to be published, like in a, at a later date, you have to include when it's gonna be published. So for here, they included to be published in 2017. Presentations. So when including presentations in your C CV, these can be any poster presentations, any symposia that you um, presented at or any conferences that you presented, any like research or anything. So this is example, it's important to include the title of your presentation, where you presented and the date. Um, you're also able to include professional memberships, but this is optional. So professional memberships can include um, organizations that are discipline specific. So for example, here at UCSC, we have the Society of Hispanic Professional Eng Engineers, or like the National Society of Black Engineers. Those are like disciplines that are very specific um, and that apply to like the academic um, positions that you're able to apply to. Um, other sections or like other professional memberships can be like certain activities, conferences, or leadership roles that you held within those different organizations. Um, you also include honors and awards. So here, typically, it's important to list um, any honors and awards that you've received. So for example, like if you were in the Dean's Honor list, like you list, um, you specifically state like, oh, I was in on on, I was on the Dean's Honor List and state for how many quarters. Or you can also state like winter quarter 2020 or like more specific dates. So just including like any honors or, or awards that you've earned throughout your undergraduate career. Additional sections. Um, so you're, you are able to include additional sections. These can include like any activities or involvement, any specific skills that you've learned, any trainings or certifications, multiple languages that you speak, any work experience that's unrelated. CVs can be tailored to specific job applications or graduate programs. And um, depending on like the application or the graduate program, that's where you're able to tailor um, those addi additional sections to like highlight important skills that that certain graduate program is looking for. So this is an example for activities. So um, for example, somebody um, did the ACE program, they included what their role was within the program. So they said like a participant and um, the year that they participated in. And this can also include like orgs. So for example, for the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, you can include like your roles, so like their president, and then the years that you occupied that position. For skills, you can include technical skills, such as like any coding skills, or any skills that you have with particular software. You can also include languages. So for example, you can say like that you're fluent in Spanish, you're able to have like a conversation in French, so that's why it's conversational you're able to include any lab skills or techniques that you learn. So for example, if you learned how to like code using a certain software, like in a lab or like other kind of skills, this is where you would list them. Um, here are other examples 
um, of the CV. Um, let's see if I can open it. So here's an example for a psych um, professor who you submitted their CV. And this is like provided by the school. So here you can get like a look on how they decided to organize their CV. Um, depending on like how you like to organize it, there's like different um, method. So for example, this is like a humanities one. And then here's one, oh no. And here's one for STEM. So depending on like how you like to organize, oh no. Sorry. How you like to organize certain aspects of your um, application kind of just tailor it um, to what you like. So last tips, it's important to know your audience and do research about like the specific position that you're um, applying to. Like for example, ask yourself what the employer is looking for in terms of like certain skills or qualifications. And based on that, um, you're able to tailor your CV to show that these are like the skills that you have. When you are saving your CV, it's important to save like as a PDF document. So when you do save as a PDF, you should include like your name, the date. So an example is like S Slug Vita 2018 PDF. Um, it's important to highlight results and accomplishments, not just tasks. So again, like um, explaining like the skills that you learned and like, um, the values that you got specifically from that position. It's important to list the most relevant and compelling information at the top of each section. Um, and when you are text formatting, such as bullet points and using like bold text makes the information easier to find, especially just because like CVs do tend to be longer. It's important to like use bullet points or bold text to like highlight significant experience that you want. Um, the reader to pay attention to. And the last one is resources. So the Career Center does drop-in advising. Um, you can ask them for support for your resume or CV. You're also able to email cc underscore coach at ucsc.edu for feedback on your resume or your CV. Um, us graduate information assistants do also offer support with that you're able to make an appointment with us through um, a Google form that I can put it, post in the chat. Um, EOP academic counselors are also available for support. You can call them, call the front desk or email EOP at UCSC to schedule an appointment with them. But that was all. If you guys have any questions, um, you can drop them in the chat or you can also speak if you're comfortable don't worry we will stop the recording now so your questions could be confidential if you feel more comfortable with that yes 